Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today we're going to be making Captain America's new shield. Or shields. Racers? Captain America's new arm shield thingies. Yeah. And before we get started, I am doing things just a little bit differently in this video. I'm actually going to be splitting it up into sections so I can focus on each of those sections a little bit more and really explain what I'm doing during each of those. So from what it looks like right now, this is going to be a three-part series. This is the first one where we focus on the modeling and actually creation of the 3D file. So let's get started. All right, so first step with any project like this, especially props, is finding good reference images. So that's where we're gonna start today. I'm gonna try not to take too long on this, but it is a, a very important step, and this can honestly make or break a project, and with something like this, the bulk of the work is done right here. And this one's honestly going to be pretty difficult because um, the movie hasn't even come out yet. Actually, by the time you guys are watching this, I think it will have just come out. So I pretty much just have the trailers to go on. So we're going to go through those and all the scenes that Captain America is in and figure out exactly what these look like. But as you'll see shortly, um, it's not quite as simple as that. So let's get right into it. The first thing we do is just Google search it. Google image searches um, usually bring up a ton of great things. And you can see there's quite a few different things here that show him with his new shield um, in various different states. But we need a little bit more than this, so let's actually go to the source of these things, the trailers, and actually figure out what's going on. Okay, so we're just going to go in the order that the trailers came out, because his shield actually does change from trailer to trailer. Um, and there's a couple inconsistencies in there. So uh, it's probably going to be different in the final movie anyway, so um, we just got to pick one and kind of roll with it. And so this was the very first one that came out. So right here, you can kind of see what the shield is in these first trailers. It's almost completely black with metallic uh, fang looking things um, aligning the back of it. And it looks like it has three prongs on the front, uh, similar to like Wolverine or something like that. And if I play the clip, you can kind of see a little bit better. So it's not super high quality, but you can definitely tell that's what is going on there. And that's really the only glimpse of those you get in the first trailer. Now the second trailer was the uh, Super Bowl trailer, and luckily we get a few more clips of him in this one. The biggest one comes right at the beginning, so let's take a look right there. And so we can see it actually in action, and you can tell that the shield is actually different in this one than it was in the first trailer. So let's see what we can learn by stepping through it. So first of all, you see his hand open and then close quickly as he pulls it back. So there's obviously some sort of mechanism that triggers it in whatever he is holding onto. So he closes his hand and that activates it. Then if I keep stepping, you can see a very quick transition there into um, you know, just two frames and the, the wings on the side have pretty much come out. So fully collapsed, he basically just presses the button and then boom, boom, the sides are out. And then there's a little bit of a delay and then the top part springs out as well. So that actually tells us a lot about what this shield is um, and how it functions. The only thing we don't know is what's on the other side of it that he's holding on to. So let's look further into the trailer. All right, and here we have um, another really good clip of the underside. And it has some inconsistencies with the other designs, but there's enough there that I think we can build something. So first of all, the main thing is we get a look at that handle. And it looks pretty basic. It looks just like a, a bar that he's holding on to. So maybe we can work some sort of button in there um, so we can press just by gripping it, you know? Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do, and you can, you don't really see him gripping, he tightens his grip a little bit there, and the wings come out, and then there's that delay, and then the top pops up, and see those things actually come out differently, those little um, fangs on the top, those come out differently than they did before, but there you can see the strap again. So that gives us a little bit of a better look. And at the time of filming this, uh, those are the only trailers that are out, so that's all we have to go on. Uh, like I said, it's likely to change in the movie, but for now, that's what we've got. Um, there is one other thing to consider. <clears throat> if we look back at the images, there's a toy that came out. I think it's an official toy. And he has a wildly different shield in those... And all the different toys so I don't really know what is going on there um, 
So like I said, we're just gonna have to pick one up. And I'm just gonna go with the one that's in the most recent trailers. So with things like this, when I'm going to model them, the easiest way to go about it is actually just to take pixel measurements, or um, you can even get out a set of calipers and just measure your screen. Just make sure you don't change the size of it on your screen. But there you can get pretty accurate measurements for um, the length of it, the width from wing to wing when it's expanded, and all the different segments on it. And then doing some simple math, you can kind of figure out how big it really needs to be. So to make this fit me, I just measured my forearm from fist to elbow. I added a little bit because it looks like it extends a little bit more. And then I just scaled all of the measurements up from what I measured with the calipers up to fit that size. It's a pretty simple process, but if that didn't make a lot of sense or you guys are really interested in that type of thing, let me know down in the comments because I could make a full video um, sort of explaining that process of translating pixel measurements to, um, to uh, real world units. So from there, the only thing left to do is to actually model this thing. And we are going to go over to Fusion 360 for that, so let's get started. Okay, so we have the main shape completely sketched out at this point, um, and that's honestly a lot of the battle, but this next part can actually be a little bit tricky um, because the it is not perfectly flat, so we can't just extrude from here. Um, I am going to extrude, but I'm actually gonna combine it with a shape that I create using the sculpting environment in here. And I think basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cylinder, kind of squish it down just a little bit, um, and so it kind of creates a nice curve and I might put a crease just along the top. So I'm actually going to slow this next portion down just a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I think it could be helpful for newcomers. Well, this is uh, pretty much the full model. I still have to do some work on the inside for the mechanics to get it to move right. But um, for the time being, this is the completed shape. But as you can see right here, um, if I hide the tip part, you can see that the inside is hollow and things should be able to slide together. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually get these printing because I think whatever we create, we will just be able to add to the inside after it's already created uh, with the help of a little bit of glue. And here's one kind of final look at the shape of it. Um, I know it's probably not perfect for what they have in the movie, but it's pretty dang close. 
And if you want to see, um, this was the final shape that I used to create this. So I ended up using a cylinder and just kind of pulling it around until I got the basic shape that I wanted. And then I used the sketch underneath to um, cut out sections of this. And then I just duplicated it um, and moved it down a little bit so I could subtract it and get the curve on the bottom side as well. And I think that actually worked out pretty good. Well, that's pretty much it for part one of this series, the basic modeling. Um, part two is going to be focusing on electronics and some of the more mechanical elements of this thing, so you're not going to want to miss that. Um, and then part three will be the painting and reveal of the final project. So um, I will put links to those videos once they are completed down in the description and probably in the I and the end card, uh, they'll be all over the place. So make sure you check those out as well. Um, also, if you guys enjoy what we do here on the channel and wanna help support us, we just launched a Teespring store. So we have official t-shirts. Um, you can't see this very well, but I will post better images here. This one that I'm currently wearing is the Keep Creating shirt. It's what I sign off every video with. And this design was created by the lovely and talented Chelsea. But if you just want the basic Chaos Cortec logo, we also have that available, as well as some hoodies and a couple other things up there. And all of that support will go right back into the channel and helping us create these things and just making bigger and better things on the channel. So that link will be down in the description. Then as always guys, um, if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and get subscribed. Hit that little bell icon um, so that YouTube will actually notify you when I put out videos. And then that's it for me. So thank you guys for watching and until next time, Keep creating.